how are you guys? I hope you have a spare moment today because we are going to play with this old Russian camera. So let me know if you are here, if you can see me and hear me and soon we are going to start. Hello, how are you? Okay, I can see you joining. That's great. I'm just checking now the screen. Hello, Lori. Hello, Sonica. Hi, guys. No, this is the old one. I'm waiting for the... Hello, Caroline. <laughs> I want this to refresh, but I can't see myself yet. Oh, really? Okay, I think we are back. <laughs> Hello, Ilona. I know there was a break, so hopefully this is it. We won't have any more of these. Okay, I guess. Can you see me and can you hear me? This is the most important part. And if yes, please share that stream to other groups. If you can share it to Create with Prima and to Finevan Friends Open Studio. And you can also share it to Art Collective. So all the people who would like to join, they can join. Of course, you can share in any other groups as well. And today we are going to play a little bit with the old camera and hopefully this is going to be fun because this is going to be a chance to look a little bit more on the rust paste and I will talk about the, this kind of product. So that would be interesting uh, uh, information for those of you who would like to learn more about this product. Hello, Anna. Hello, Julia. Hello, Teresa. Thank you so much. Okay, that's good, Sonica. I will just switch off uh, the internet in my other connection and that is going to be it. Okay, give me a second. I, I know this is not too flattering. Just try to ignore that part. <laughs> okay, I should put something pretty there, but I have to, I have to paint that. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, that should give us the maximum of the internet connection. These are the joys of mobile internet. Um, I always say that this is a great thing to live in the countryside, but this is not so great when you have to rely on the mobile broadband. So it is sometimes a challenge. Hello to everybody. I know Wednesday is not my usual day, but I hope it's going to be fun anyway. Maybe you can watch a little bit and then you can always see the rest of it because the live is going to be recorded. And um, of course you can share with your friends and that is going to be um, uh, hopefully uh, something that is going to give you inspiration. <laughs> camera and snacks ready. Cindy is the, the gold star student. She is ready with everything. Uh, oh, thank you, Gabby. <laughs> and thank you. Greetings to Portugal. Well, to Azores Islands. I have never been there. I would love to go. So guys, uh, today I'm going to show you something that I was doing long, long time ago. That was the video that is on my YouTube channel and I was altering then all the old camera, but now I want to do a little bit different. I would like to embellish that in the different style. And also I'm going to use the rust paste in a little bit more complicated way. So you can consider that to be like uh, one level up to the video that I did uh, in the very beginning when we were uh, releasing the uh, rust paste set. And of course there are now many sets of the rust paste but hello Debbie! <laughs> but now um, generally this group of products, so the 
um, fantasy textures, uh, sorry, the rust paste, and then the effects which are inspired by the rust paste, so patina paste, and then uh, the texture fantasy, they're all working in the same way. So this is going to give you the information what you can do with these products and what they are. Uh, if you would like to create together with me, you need something to alter, you will need some gesso. I'm going to use a clear and black gesso, mostly uh, clear just to start to make it faster. Some embellishments, something to stick the embellishments on. So for example, uh, heavy body gel or modeling paste. <laughs> and uh, we also have um, uh, the rust paste set and the water sprayer. You can you also take some waxes, uh, the colors that are going to be uh, going with your idea. I've, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I have the whole set here. And um, let's start in a moment. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, I will try to look at the other screen from time to time. And if I won't answer, just put it in bold and repeat until I will see it. So that is going to help me so much. But also there's, uh, I can see some of my design team members here watching. So they may give you a hand and give you some tips and ideas and my brand ambassadors as well. So uh, they are the people who are helping me here uh, with those daily live streams. And uh, there are also uh, my patrons from Patreon group, my official sponsors and uh, patrons of me as an artist. Huge greetings to all of the patrons who are here today. So uh, thank you so much. This camera is not completely metal. This is old Russian Smyrna. And Smyrna was a cheaper model made for people who were maybe not so high end. Um, when it comes to uh, taking photos, parts are metal. So the lens here is metal, of course, that part is metal, but the main body I'm showing you now, this is a good quality plastic, more like ebony, um, quite hard to break, but um, this is not a uh, super precious kind of the camera. I have two of these at home on the shelf. So this is number three and I don't feel too guilty to paint it. Uh, Smyrna, uh, they are, uh, I would say, the cameras from the 70s, uh, depending on the model. This is like the, from the 70s. So um, they are quite popular in Eastern Europe and uh, you can find them on the flea market for really a uh, few euro. And this is not expensive uh, thing to buy if you would like to have it in your collection or if you would like to turn it into piece of art. Of course, all of the uh, techniques I'm showing you on this uh, camera, you can uh, apply on any kind of home decor or uh, mixed media project. Uh, so it's going to be kind of easy to apply the same techniques. And uh, you can put it on the wooden uh, background, on the like on the frame or on the box. Uh, you can put it on the metal background. You can put it on the glass background. It is just the general idea how to use supplies together. And I hope this video is going to answer a lot of your questions about the rust paste as well. Um, hello, everybody. My brand ambassadors Vasilis and Linda just joined us. And I can see friends coming from all over, from Slovenia, from South Africa and from United States and from <laughs> all the possible countries. So it's great to he have you here in my studio. Let me switch to the uh, table view and we're going to start with preparing that surface so uh, we can add extra colors to it. Uh, so. First, of course, what you need to do is to uh, add some gesso so everything will stick better. Yes, Poland. Poland is very uh, strongly represented in mixed media world. So, okay, it's almost straight. Let's say this is straight. I don't want you to be seasick when I'm moving the camera. Okay. So, as I told you, this is uh, mostly plastic, 
this is metal part, the lens, uh, and I'm going to save that part from painting. So what I'm going to do now, I will try to cover that a little bit with the masking tape. So hopefully um, maximum of this is going to be uh, safe. I'm very um, heavy handed when it comes to application of the art mediums. So I prefer to just put some masking tape on it instead of trying to be careful while painting, right? So that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, here is the little window. This is where we are going to look through. So if you feel that you would like to uh, keep it safe as well, uh, it's may it's it's probably safer to cover that with a bit of masking tape as well. Uh, just you know, I know myself and I'm hopeless. So <laughs> you can always add finishing touches around that place later. So I covered the lens and I covered the uh, I don't know how you call it in. Uh, English, we, I would say this is just a window. Uh, in Polish, this is a vizier. <laughs> so the place that you look through. And before I'm going to add any embellishments on it, I will put a coat of any kind of just so you can find, uh, because we just want to make sure this quite old item uh, is going to be matte and ready to go. <sighs> You can see it's still in working condition. So hopefully after all the alteration, I can still make it work. Okay. Uh, the, for example, uh, the first step, it can be clear gesso. So all my metal and plastic parts will be much more uh, workable. Uh, there is no special technique about clear gesso. You just need to apply it with nice coat. Oh yeah, I would. I always try to have um, selection of the cameras at home, and I don't really alter them too much unless I have two or three of the same kind. So then I don't feel guilty, but I keep them as a part of my display. Yes, this mina is broken. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, of course it is. Uh, it does. Yeah, the. Um, I don't know that part that should move doesn't move anymore. Like, ah. Yeah, it does move, but it's not really working. Sorry. I have two more and they're in better condition. Hello, Amelia. So I'm starting with just one coat of uh, clear gesso to make my work easier. And clear gesso will dry quickly. You can dry it with the heat gun. And of course, when you work on the 3D object, it's kind of a challenge sometimes to find a way to hold it. So I will try to paint the bottom and the top and the sides and front first, dry it, and then I can paint the back of it. One coat is going to be enough. It's just to help us uh, stick the embellishments on because we're going to turn it into a little bit more steampunk-like style. So this is going to be a bit more fancy. It is not the most um, complicated design of the camera, so we can add some extras to make it look more cool. Okay, this is really enough. So I'm going to dry that part and then I can paint the back of it. Yes, I know. My husband is a photographer as well, and he checked carefully which one is in the worst condition. So he gave me the one that is certainly not working anymore. And we have the, exactly the same one on the display, and it is in much better condition for sure. So you don't have to worry, uh, Ingrid, that this is uh, still alive. No, no, it's completely dead and we don't have to feel guilty. 
Remember when you alter items or when you do some kind of home decor, the preparation is important. You should not um, skip this uh, preparation step. So if you work on the wooden elements, it's good to start with sanding them down and then adding gesso. If you work on the plastic or on the metal or glass, it's important to put the primer. So the gesso is going really to make your life so much easier in the next steps. So it's better to really spare this extra five minutes and then um, have much easier job than to struggle with the next steps, with gluing, with painting. So uh, it is not much work, as you can see. I'm trying just to paint with one coat of clear gesso or any other gesso. What? Oh, my dog is not happy <laughs> because I keep moving here and she can't sleep. Poor thing. Yeah, so clear gesso is a kind of quick solution and it's the thinnest of them all. So you will have the details of the project uh, visible. So I really love thick gesso, heavy black or heavy white. But if you'd like to see the details, white, uh, clear one is the most liquid. Now we have to make a plan. What do we want to add? Uh, what do we want to put on our camera? Um, of course, it all depends how much you'd like to change the original look. And I have some selection of the embellishments which are going to be matching uh, the size. Hello, Mia. <laughs> okay, you can tell clear just so it's dry because it's turning transparent. You can see the biggest difference is now the camera is matte, right? So that is ready to go. And suggestions of the sizes. I can see that, for example, uh, these are smaller embellishments. They're going to be nice to add some steampunk touches. They are small enough. That is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, for example, I think uh, going to be good option. The same in this set, we have these ones and probably even that one is going to be fine. So I have these here as well. Um, just in case, if I would like to add some extra knobs, because I would love to, I have the set of the knobs. You can think about some extra uh, touches that are going to be adding those details, which are kind of missing on this design. And for the touch of magic, I've got some mechanical um, stars in three sizes. They are kind of going with the concept and the idea as well. And of course, uh, as <laughs> Alexandra noticed, uh, I also prepared like the general selection of embellishments here. And I'm going to try to add some elements which are found objects. I will try to see which one of these are going to fit. Yeah, this is cookie tin, of course. And I've got some light bulbs. So, you know, there should be the flash of the camera here. So we can try to replace that using the light bulb. Oh, I have two sizes to check. Also, I've got some smaller chipboards, which are going to be quite flat. This is not a bad option. I've got some um, leather belts, which may add something more steampunky to it. And on the back, which I want to keep mostly flat, I was thinking I can add some label uh, to add extras. And again, I've got some more of the flat embellishments, uh, similar to the ones I was showing you in the packaging. So this is basically my plan. For the adhesive, they are options. One of them is of course the heavy body gel. You can use that one. Uh, another good option would be modeling paste. If you have modeling paste uh, from Art Basics, this is also going to be good glue. We need something that is going to be thick and is going to hold elements in place. Um, if you don't have these um, 3D gloss gel or 3D matte gel, 
they are also good options. So that will be my suggestion. Uh, let's say today we are going to use modeling paste. I have it in my hands. It's a big jar. I will take a good scoop on the palette and then we can work. Ah, I will just put it on the lid. You can see this is almost like toothpaste and this is white after drying, but we don't have to worry because this project will be completely repainted. Gels are better when we are planning to uh, keep parts of the embellishments or parts of the background visible because it's transparent. Uh, while uh, modeling paste works really well, but the problem is it is white. So for some projects, um, it is simply better to uh, use the gel medium. And if you are not sure what you're going to do, again, I would say gel medium is going to be your friend. Hmm, so let's start with the uh, unpacking the embellishments. So I'm going to open some of these. So I have them here on hand, just in case. When you are working, these are perfect little palettes for the paint. So keep them somewhere. It's kind of recycling as well. So try to give them a chance to uh, be used again in the future. Well, hello everybody and greetings to Florida as well. Okay, so these are perfect size, right? I'm not sure if these ones will fit, but we will check. Oh, I will keep these in case. So first of all, a little bit of the measuring. This is still working. Yeah. So if I can find something that is going to fit under, Ah. Okay, there is a chance. Oh, if I stick it here, I can still move my... That should work. And then for the good balance, because we have two mechanical elements here, it would be nice to add something more on the other side but maybe not too big. Let's check if this one is going to fit better. Um, yeah, blocking. I will try to keep these two. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, this is a little bit too big. Oh, this one looks cool. Okay, this one goes here. And of course, we have to start with something. So I'm going to glue the biggest and the most important elements first. Don't worry about the excess. I'm going to clean it off in a moment with the brush. But however, you know, we are going to use texture paste on the top anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. This is exactly the same. And that one is kind of nice. Oh, this one. And the winner is that one. Uh, Black modeling paste. I don't know. I didn't consider that yet. I will have to think what would be the purpose of using it. Uh, probably for using with the stencils, I guess. That would be one of the options. Here, I would like to put the label. Your story matters. So we will add the new label for the camera. I keep 
putting my finger in the jar once I put the modeling paste in front of me. It's hard to kill your habits. Hello, hello, good to see you. You know, you have to be careful who you are trying to rob when you are taking the camera because if it's going to be something very precious, oh, you may be in trouble. There are some cameras I would never dare to touch because they are really almost like uh, my babies. There is no way I would touch it and try to alter it. No, they are too beautiful and too precious. But the one which is uh, <laughs> not so expensive and not so rare, it can go as a uh, cool altered project. I think we can add some tiny bits here as well. Oh, I have this one. What is the point of really having that here on the lid if I always go into the into the jar? Of course, imagination is the limit, as always. You have to uh, just trust your instinct when it comes to creativity. I'm not sure if I can keep it working. Probably the paste is going to kill it anyway. Oh well, I can at least try. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, oh, that's cute. Propeller. Last time I couldn't really remember the name in English. I almost broke my tongue saying that word. Hello, Katya, my dear. <laughs> Hello, Marilyn. <laughs> oh, no worries. We are very relaxed and we don't really have to. Look, you didn't tell me you don't see anything. Look, I... I should probably move it a little bit more down. Yeah. Wait. Close your eyes. So you're not getting seasick. Now I can work and you see everything. <laughs> um, what else we can add here? I had this little spot that would be nice to fill with something. Hmm. How long is it? I was worried you couldn't. I think in my on my screen it was a little bit too far down okay so i'm adding like a belt okay they look quite cool so maybe let's add some of the screw heads I've got some screw heads that are going to add nice finishing touches. I'm going to put a big screw here on the side and then smaller screw heads and uh, bolts. They're going to add more steampunk finish. These are all coming from the packages like that, but I always put the leftovers into the bigger containers after the classes and this is how it ends up in my house. So let's add some of the bolt heads as well to turn it into 
steampunk looking camera so some extra screws for the design hello patricia uh, i should answer hello to one of my favorite students in this case if you start with such a statement <laughs> i can't be worse <laughs> Look, I'm just adding little bits and pieces. We don't want to cover that completely because it's still a camera. We don't want to change it into something completely um, hard to recognize. And that may happen if you go very, very far with alteration. Sometimes um, it's hard to recognize the object. So it's good to have the balance between uh, alteration and the real look. So I'm trying to make it look cool, but at the same time, I would like to be sure that people still see this as the camera. There are two empty spots, which I could fill with a little screw head, but maybe different style like this one. Oh. That is going to be perfect. As you can see, modeling paste is uh, quite convenient. And of course, the white color is not going to be a big problem for us. We are just going to paint it black and then rusty anyway. Now, I think the front is almost ready. Maybe I will add one more detail here on the belt. That looks cool as well. And then we can look at the back of the and the top of the camera. Because um, the top looks quite plain, I was thinking I will add some extra knobs or uh, buttons that we can pretend they are therefore being pressed down. And um, before that, I was just going to dry the front a little bit so nothing will come off by accident, okay? Drying is a very important part of the process because this is what is keeping our composition safe. And in the meantime, thank you so much for joining. I know it's Wednesday. This is not so... A convenient day for the live stream but I hope you're going to have a moment to have a look anyway and um, I know this is uh, maybe not Christmas project but as I was trying to explain before I'm not huge on the Christmas decorations like I am not really great in making these and even if I make them they look not so Christmassy so that's why I always uh, struggle when it comes to Christmas time because I am hopeless at making cards and um, Christmas decorations. They, they just don't call my name somehow. And that's why we came with this camera <laughs> instead and a little bit more information on the rust paste this time. I know that uh, for some of you, Christmas decorations are absolutely the top of the top. But for me, it's really kind of a pain. Yes, cameras are really lovely items. Now I have to look at the sides to see which part is opening. Okay, here. So I should not glue something on that side and here. Yeah, I should just keep it. I can add something on this area but not here in case in if somebody would be very curious i would like to open it we can give a chance to make it happen oh that was a lot I, okay okay I, I can give you a moment of truth easter is even worse i can't imagine making easter decorations i like decorating eggs but i do it more traditional way not really uh, artistic like not really very much mixed media 
but maybe one day I will decide to make like uh, steampunk eggs collection and this way it's going to be a little bit more me. So now we will try to put it carefully this way. Okay, Pfft, still works. And I was thinking about putting a label here because there is that part that kind of looks cool and I would like to keep some of the um, surface flat so we can do some drip effects with the uh, uh, rust effect paste. Uh, so I have two labels. I have this kind of label. It's going to be quite cool, I think. And we have this label. And both of them are kind of fit fitting. This is my cut, so we take it away. This one is more decorative. This is more... Um, maybe this one. I'm sorry. So, again, I'm sticking the label. Oh, that's a great idea with the picture of somebody. I love that concept. And we can pretend to screw it down as well. I, I just don't know why I have this problem with Christmas. I, I do decorate my house. I have really nice Christmas tree and lights and everything. But when it comes to Christmas crafting, I feel overwhelmed. This would be the best description. Overwhelming. <laughs> hmm. No. That fits perfectly. So this little knob has the word art on it. Uh. Yeah, screw heads, they are really doing great finishing uh, job. When you have some kind of project, when you are uh, going for more mechanical look, it's nice to finish with something that is going to uh, pre you know, pretend that elements are really attached. And um, sometimes, uh-huh, this one didn't stay. Uh, sometimes you can put brads, of course, and they're going to hold it in place. But sometimes there's no way to put a brad or a real screw. So then you can uh, just pretend and try to add uh, some kind of uh, embellishment that is, you know, like the, uh, pretending it is really screwed down. And this is when I use uh, bolts and elements which are uh, similar to screw heads. And this is kind of cool solution as well. So here I've got some things that I would like to try on the top. And I wanted to use one of these light bulbs on the top of the camera. This one has this uh, bottom, which is not very flat. Uh, so it, it will be harder. I can try to put it this way, but this one is more flat. So if I will be careful, I can add it here and I can even secure it with the hot glue and then add the modeling paste around it. This is the bottom of the light bulb and that may be a quite cool element as well. And then we can add these as extra knobs, I think. And I can always add more of the small ones. So this is the secret plan. What do you think? <laughs> So for this light bulb, I will put a little bit of the hot glue here to keep it straight while I'm using modeling paste around it. 
let's hope it's going to hold it enough that is really cool but it's very empty as well maybe let's do the same thing <laughs> I'm looking for the glue stick and they were here not so long ago but that means like a week ago and that makes me feel they are buried under stuff here okay found it so let's give this Oh, not, not enough. One, two, and then maybe three. This one I can just stick with the modeling paste. It's going to be fine. Okay. Hmm. That really started to look really cool. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at smaller knobs. This set of knobs was inspired by uh, the guitar knobs electric guitar knobs and i really like it okay so let's put three of them and that will be it but before oh here before i would like to secure my metal elements which are only glued down with the glue, hot glue, especially the light bulb. Don't worry, it is messy at the moment. I'm going to come with a brush and push it in the right position. No more hot glue. Let's plug it, unplug it. Okay, and now we can like push it into the right place. and take off the excess where we don't need it. Remember, there will be texture here anyway. So a bit of imperfection is not going to make huge difference. It's better to secure it and dry it completely and make sure it is going to stay in place than to be sorry because things will come off. And this object, it's very likely people will, happy, uh, will be happy to touch. They will be happy to take it into their hands and to see how it was done. So it is better to add extra, okay? I know why am I talking so much. It's because it's so quiet here in the <laughs> usual situation. There are people talking in the background and now <laughs> it's so, so quiet when I do the live streams. I have to imagine that you really can see me. <laughs> Look, this is empty inside, so I have to put a little bit more. Okay, two is enough. Because it's one, two, three, four, five. This is an even number that is going to be really nice. 
cleaning, drying, and then we go with gesso. Cleaning. A little bit of cleaning. Oh, come on, you hot glue. Okay. <laughs> this will be the moment when I can come uh, again and read the questions. So if you have any questions about the process so far, I will be very happy to answer. Remember, this is going to be very, very vintage, almost like salvaged uh, item. So it's not a big deal that there is going to be extra texture in some parts, like here, for example. It's already dry on the glass, of course. My life is a, always struggle. <laughs> uh oh, I touched something on the back. Of course. It all depends what time you're going to bed. I think I'm going to use the paste in about 20 minutes. <laughs> and that is like maximum. Mm -hmm. So now drying time. The hardest part is done. This was the most challenging because we had to make the construction of the uh, camera. And we needed to do a bit of the conceptual work. So thinking about what is going to fit, but also there was this uh, challenge of gluing down. L oh shit, shit, sorry. It's stuck to my finger. Ah, now. <laughs> this challenge of uh, putting things um, from different angles and holding the el uh, elements at the same time. So, you know. Now I'm trying to go from different directions to make sure the modeling paste is going to dry. In the meantime, you can drink some tea. you Patricia I kind of think that there is beauty in uh, a lot of everyday objects just people don't give them the chance they don't think about them as potential art objects they just see what they are they forget that there is a lot of potential a lot of um, chances for the makeover yeah snack time <laughs> If you um, start looking at uh, uh, things and you can see that they are in fact beautiful the way they were designed and then they have a lot of natural possibilities to use them for different kind of purposes, then your creativity gets on the next level, I think. You can just use anything you have. Huh? It 
it's super hot so now i have to give it a moment to cool down sometimes when you touch elements you will see they're moving but this may be not because they are still wet it's because the gel medium or modeling paste is so hot so it's good to give them a moment to cool down and check again after that like here i can feel this is still a bit wet oh hot I'm trying to take off the things that are not needed. These are okay. Look what I've done. <laughs> yes, my husband is my best cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's always like that. Uh, this one is moving. I don't want it to be like this. I want it to be here. Yeah, perfect. Not bad at all. <laughs> the mold. Ah, you, you remember the toy challenge? Yeah, I have to see the whole comment. Yes, monster truck. <laughs> okay i'm touching now okay they're almost good this one is ow. again it's, i'm sticking to it you can see modeling paste is very good glue so be careful don't glue yourself to your project by accident because it may happen So now I'm going to take off the tray with the potential elements. We don't need it. I'm going to make some space so we can take the paste and the black gesso. And we will start painting. Okay, I have to be very careful around these two guys and a little bit here, but it should be fine. So let's say this is completely dry. It is not, so accident may happen, but I don't want to wait too long. And if you can, wait until everything is completely dry. Then your work is going to be so much easier. And uh, of course, you can uh, take... Uh, that to the dry and warm place and it's going to dry naturally or just leave it overnight that will be a great solution or you can use the hair dryer or the heat gun once everything is there we can prepare the background to be painted and because the colors of the rust they are going to be mostly browns and reds dark ones and maybe i would like to see a little bit of the natural shadow and the camera is black anyway, I will start with the black gesso to give it a coat of priming. So all these glass elements, all these metal elements, they're going to accept the paste better. Uh, you could use any other gesso, but only if you're going to repaint everything completely with the paste. So keep that in mind. It's uh, just convenient and that's why I'm going to use black one. You know, I have that advantage here that I have every possible color of gesso in front of me, so I don't have to worry. But in case if you are wondering, yes, you can use any color of gesso as long as you are going to repaint your project completely with the rust paste. And now one coat of gesso. And of course here on this uh, modeling paste, you have to be a bit careful because maybe in some places it may be still a little bit um, 
wet so it's better to be gentle I'm just going to dab it here so I'm not pulling that out okay if you have any questions about gesso um, this is acrylic primer so the kind of solution that makes your backgrounds matte and not absorbing at the same time so that means that you are going to uh, have your you know work much easier i'm just thinking maybe i should not paint the light bulb completely i will try to leave some of that natural so there's a chance we're going to see the inside of the light bulb i just thought about that <laughs> luckily it was not too late so here when i suspect my modeling paste is still a little bit wet i'm just dabbing instead of pulling I really love the bottom of the light bulb here. I think that looks very natural, very much like in steampunk style. And I'm sure I'm going to use that element in the future on more of the projects because it's super cool. You can see the makeover is really quick with the black gesso. I'm just going to dry the bottom so I can uh, put it back just so it dries quickly, so that makes our job easier. When the gesso dries, you can see it is turning matte, and that means it is drying. Once everything is matte, it means it is safe to go. Yes, black gesso is very, very useful art medium, especially when it comes to altered art. Uh, it's very uh, good solution, especially in the company of the metallic effects. I will try to be careful. I can always paint the bottom later as well. So now I have to paint the top. Well, the top, the front, the top is painted. And again, the same story, trying to get rid of the metal and plastic to cover everything nicely. And of course, this time we also have to paint the side of the lens. Don't worry, I'm painting it. I will make it silver later. It's just easier when everything is prepared. Have you got any questions, guys? Like, you're very quiet so i presume that you know everything and everything is clear and no questions about the process so far um yeah that's going to be this challenging part I think this one doesn't want to stay here. Yeah. Yeah, it's better without it. Goodbye. Next time.
ready. <laughs> Alexandra, you are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Vasilis, you are you are sweet as well. Thank you so much. It's just fun to make, and I was thinking maybe somebody will get encouraged to play with the vintage uh, objects to create something unique this way. They are beautiful as they are, but some of them are not so beautiful. So we can make them a bit, uh, give them an upgrade or as is upcycling. So now I'll let it dry a little bit with the heat gun. And in the meantime, I will prepare the brushes for the paste. The paste is coarse, so it's better to use old brushes or the brushes that are just typically for this purpose, so you are not going to use your beautiful new brushes, because that will be a shame to lose them. brushes my husband is the best he just gave me new tea I will put a mat here because everything will be wet in a moment. I even tried to clean the mat. Can you believe it? I tried. It doesn't mean I did it, but it looks better. So, yeah, maybe I will... It's going to be. Oh, shish. <clears throat> Taram, tam, taram, stick. My fingers are too sticky. I have to clean them off. <laughs> so let's look at the paste now. Uh, in the set, original set of the rust paste, they were three colors and you're not supposed to dab them all like one on the top of another. It's more like paint because the rust effect paste is in fact acrylic medium, which is a cousin of the uh, paint, matte paint, and the cousin of... Um, texture paste at the same time. It's quite fast drying. So what is very important is to keep your product moist. This is very liquid because I overdid it and I added too much of the water and fluid medium inside. But um, just to show you what happens after some time when you are keeping that close, it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. This is quite workable. But uh, if you're going to forget about your paste, you're not going to add some water when you close, it's going to be a problem. So uh, you can revive it, adding fluid mediums or acry acrylic mediums. And um, for example, very good solution is to add a bit of the fluid medium for liquid acrylics, or you can uh, add some hot water as well. If it's completely solid, it's still possible to break it and to revive it, but it is going to be hard. So it's better when you can to check on your paste from time to time. 